Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Claire Kim, your MC for today's lecture. It is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the 84th Sukhya Test Korean Lecture Meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so delighted to welcome His Excellency Choma Mose, the Hungarian ambassador to Korea, who is going to give us an insightful lecture titled The Hungarian Archive Sources about the Relations Between North Korea and Hungary During the Korean War. No further delay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation. It's my very great pleasure to be here. Um, particularly, it's uh, not my first time here in the uh, Academy of Korean Studies. Um, four years ago, uh, it was my great pleasure to um, uh, gave a, a lecture here as a professor of uh, Korean studies uh, uh, from the Budapest University. Uh, the subject of my lecture is uh, the archive sources about the relation between Hungary uh, and North Korea during the Korean War. But uh, before uh, starting my lecture, uh, let me give you a short introduction to the history of relation between the faraway countries, Hungary and uh, Korea. Um, it's really known that uh, the first interaction between Hungary and the Korean Peninsula happened in the end of the 19th century. In the year uh, 1890, a um, first ever Austro-Hungarian uh, ship called Zrini Corvette visited the Korean Peninsula. If you see uh, the uh, left side of uh, the screen, you can see the Zrini Corvette, uh, which visited uh, the Choson Kingdom to establish ties. Um, it was um, difficult to establish uh, immediately at that time, but uh, uh, two years later, in the year uh, 1892, uh, that uh, treaty of friendship, uh, commerce and naval uh, traffic was signed by the Choson Kingdom and uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, at that time, um, in the early 19th century, a Hungarian important person, uh, a Hungarian priest visited uh, the Korean Peninsula uh, which was called uh, uh, Tehan Cheguk at that time. Um, that uh, important Hungarian person was uh, Peter Vaj. Uh, he visited uh, Korea in 92 and had uh, opportunity to uh, talk with Emperor Kojong. Um, uh, it is the first important um, uh, episodes in the relation between Hungary and Korea. If you are interested uh, um, how was the meeting of uh, priest uh, Peter Vaj and Emperor Kojong, uh, let me offer his uh, book, which was published in Budapest in 96. Uh, the uh, title of the book is Emperors and Empires of the East. Um, a few years ago, I prepared this uh, uh, Korean version. Um, one chapter of my book, uh, which was published under the title of Hampandorul uh, Pangmunhan Hongari Indul Kiok Pimangnok, Memorandum of the Hungarian Persons Who Visited the Korean Peninsula. Uh, one chapter of this book uh, introduced the observations of uh, uh, Peter Vaj, who had opportunity to talk personally with Emperor uh, Kojong. And now uh, let me move uh, to the main topic of my presentation, uh, which is uh, the relation between North Korea and Hungary during the Korean War. After establishing the DPRK in North Korea in uh, 1948, uh, Hungary formed official diplomatic ties with the easternmost state of the Soviet bloc. Uh, it's very interesting to see um, the ministers of foreign affairs in both sides 
uh, in Hungary was called uh, Laszlo Reich, and uh, in North Korea was the well-known Korean communist Pak Honyong. The both person um, were later um, purged and executed by their own comrades due to the internal turbulences in the communist regime. So we can uh, say that the fate of the two ministers, uh, like Roy uh, Laszlo from Hungary and Pak Honyong from uh, North Korea, um, were uh, similar. Um, right before uh, the breakout of the Korean War, um, in the spring um, of 1950, the two countries uh, agreed to exchange uh, envoys. Uh, the first ever Hungarian envoy to North Korea was uh, um, um, communist uh, cadre uh, Sándor Simic. You can see him on the uh, left side of the screen. Uh, Sándor Simic arrived uh, to uh, the northern part of the Korean Peninsula in the spring of 1950. Uh, he arrived from Vladivostok. Uh, to the um, North Korean seaport of Ranam. Uh, he was greeted there by the local authorities and uh, he received a special train to move uh, to Pyongyang. Uh, according to his uh, archive reports, um, he and his colleagues had some difficulties uh, in the North Korean capital because the only hotel at that time in Pyongyang, uh, which was called Intourist Hotel, uh, was um, uncomfortable for, uh, for the foreigners. And uh, he wrote, also wrote in, uh, in his report that uh, um, the Korean foods, uh, um, the Korean cuisine uh, was not uh, so familiar. Uh, uh, to him. And the North Korean side uh, sent the uh, envoy also to Budapest. He was Kwon Ojik. Kwon Ojik, and uh, let me add that his uh, brother uh, was a very famous Korean independence uh, fighter activist, Kwon O Sol. Kwon O Sol, who died in a Japanese prison uh, during the Japanese colonial time. Uh, so um, his family is well known also in, in South Korea. Kwonojik uh, became communist and uh, moved to North Korea uh, in the second half of the 1940s. Um, please don't misunderstand, it's not an advertisement. Uh, all of the information uh, what, I, um, what I'm uh, speaking about is available in my book, uh, uh, which was published recently. And one copy of the book is uh, available in the library here in the Academy of Korean Studies. I um, donated one copy uh, today. To the, uh, to the library. So all of the archive materials, uh, what I used, um, available in this book. Um, so it's not an advertisement. Um, so let me tell you uh, what happened after the breakout of the Korean War. Um, right after the news about um, um, this conflict, a huge solidarity movement started all over in the Soviet bloc countries from East Berlin to Vladivostok. And in the case of Hungary, um, the Hungarian government decided to send a hospital to North Korea with Hungarian medical staff. And right uh, one month after uh, the breakout of the Korean War, the Hungarian physicians and Hungarian nurses left to North Korea to establish a Hungarian hospital. This hospital was uh, first uh, set up, installed in the town of uh, Chunkwa. Chunkwa, which is located near to Pyongyang. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, in the end of August, this hospital was uh, destroyed, bombed um, um, during the, um, the, the conflict. 
Um, so that's why the Hungarians had to move to another part, which was Yangdok, uh, north from the uh, North Korean capital Pyongyang. Um, let me add uh, one interesting uh, information. Um, just um, to see how was working the media and the newspapers and the uh, circulation of the news in the socialist countries. Uh, when the Hungarian hospital was bombed in the end of August 1950, um, the newspapers in Hungary published a news that one of the hospitals in North Korea was destroyed. And uh, the North Korean uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Pak Honyong, protested uh, uh, to the United Nations because of uh, uh, this happened. But the Hungarian newspapers never um, shared the information that the hospital which was destroyed, it was the Hungarian hospital, it was the hospital where Hungarian uh, physicians, Hungarian uh, medical teams was working. Um, so it is, um, we can see um, um, this uh, issue as an um, example how the, um, the media system, how the news circulation was working in uh, the communist countries. Uh, if you see the screen, you can see the first location of the Hungarian hospital, uh, Chunkwa, and the um, second picture from left side, you can see um, another location, uh, which was uh, in Huichon. Uh, and um, um, the third location is around Mang Yongde. Uh, during the Korean War, um, the Hungarian hospital was um, operating in different places in North Korea. In the autumn of uh, 1950, uh, the hospital moved to Chinese territory and worked until the late spring of uh, 1951 in, uh, in Changchun in uh, northeast China, and later came back to North Korea. First was uh, uh, working, uh, operating in Mang Yongde, the birthplace of Kim Il-sung. It's very interesting to mention that uh, some family members of Kim Il-sung uh, at that time already uh, were living in Mang Yongde and uh, his aunt uh, visited the Hungarian hospital at least one time. Um, later the Hungarian hospital uh, moved uh, to Huichon um, in 1950. Uh, Sri uh, and Songrim, and the late, uh, latest um, location of the Hungarian hospital was in Sarivon city. Um, the Hungarians operated this hospital until 1957. Uh, and uh, in my capacity as the ambassador, not only for South Korea, but also for uh, North Korea, I had opportunity to visit this hospital. Um, um, you can see um, the picture of a main gate uh, of the former Hungarian hospital, which is called now um, the People's Hospital of uh, North uh, Huanghe province, um, uh, Huanghe Pugdo Immin Pyongwon. And one more interesting thing, there are still a, a bilingual monument in the garden of the hospital, which was uh, prepared by the Hungarian doctors when the Hungarian doctors left the place. Um, um, this picture on the right side uh, was taken there. Uh, this is the uh, monument, which uh, has a Hungarian script and a Korean script on the other side, uh, which is dedicated the friendship of the Korean nation and the Hungarian uh, Hungarian nation. Uh, let me uh, tell you one more interesting uh, issue that during the Korean War, a lot of uh, Korean intellectuals, well-known Korean intellectuals visited Hungary. Uh, and uh, the vast majority of uh, that intellectuals were um, uh, Volbuk people. Volbuk people uh, means uh, um, intellectuals who went from the southern part of uh, the Korean Peninsula to the north uh, before the Korean War, uh, particularly in the second half of the 
uh, 40s. So one of the um, one of the intellectuals, representative intellectuals, was the famous Korean writer Lee Tae-jun. Lee Tae-jun visited Budapest uh, in the uh, early winter of 1950. Um, on the left side, uh, you can see uh, the picture of uh, Lee Tae-jun, uh, who came uh, together with Pak Chong-e. Pak Chong-e was the second person in the North Korean hierarchy at that time. Uh, she was the um, um, mm, she was the chairwoman of the Association of the North Korean Females, um, and uh, we can also uh, uh, tell that the famous. Um, uh, Korean dancer, uh, the most representative uh, artist of the Korean dances, traditional dances. Miss Chwesungi also visited Hungary uh, in the uh, early autumn of 1951 uh, together with her daughter Ahn Song Hee. So you can uh, see them together. Um, on the left side uh, down. Um, it was the second time for An Song Hee to visit Hungary because she visited uh, before the Korean War in the year 1949. In 1949, a huge festival for youth and students uh, was uh, um, held in Budapest, uh, and the delegation from North Korea came to this, this uh, to the Mansion Festival, and uh, An Song Yi um, participated as the member of um, uh, the North Korean uh, troupe. And we can also mention the famous uh, Korean writer Han Sorya. Han Sorya, who visited Hungary in 90. Uh, 53. Uh, Hans Sorya uh, was uh, a very important and, um, and well-known um, uh, intellectual in the North Korean hierarchy at that time. Uh, one of his books, uh, Tedongang, the first uh, uh, chapter, uh, first um, uh, part of the book, Tedongang, was translated to Hungarian. Uh, language and was published at that time in uh, in Budapest. And we have to mention the North Korean students. Um, hearing the news about the, um, the terrible situation in in North Korea and uh, the the destroyed uh, towns, the destroyed schools, uh, the destroyed environments, um, like the other socialist countries, the Hungarian government decided to. Uh, receive North Korean orphans and students um, from the year 1951. The first group of the uh, North Korean students uh, arrived to Hungary in late uh, 1951, and the Hungarian government uh, um, established two kind of institutions for them. One, the first one was called Kim Il Sung Cho Dung Hak or Kim Il Sung Hak Won. Um, Kim Il Sung Elementary School, uh, which was established in Budapest uh, in the most uh, picturesque uh, part of the city. If you see the picture uh, on the left side, um, you can see the former uh, building of that uh, institution, which was uh, uh, dedicated to the North Korean student. And the second one, which was established in the year 1953, called Pak Chong -e. Institute or Pak Chong-e Koavon. Uh, I already mentioned Pak chong -e, the chairwoman of the North Korean females. Uh, it was uh, established um, in Budapest for the North Korean orphans. You can see um, on the right side um, this uh, picture. The number of the North Korean students uh, reached uh, 1,000. Uh, between 1951 and 1956. Uh, I have to 
mention one uh, very important and symbolic person from that time. Uh, he was a Hungarian teacher and scholar, Dr. Aladár Sövény. Dr. Aladár Sövény graduated at the University of Budapest and he uh, could speak Japanese. One of his major was Japanese language. And when the North Korean students arrived, them, uh, arrived uh, to Budapest uh, and the North Korean students were um, uh, escorted by North Korean teachers. Of course, nobody could speak in Korean at that time Budapest. But uh, this person, uh, Dr. Aladar Shevin, was nominated as the tutor of the North Korean students because he could speak Japanese. And he was able to communicate uh, with the North Korean um, uh, teachers who escorted uh, the students. Um, um, he was able to communicate in Japanese language. Um, we cannot forget that only uh, six years before the Korean Peninsula was under the Japanese occupation. Most of the people could speak Japanese uh, at that time. Um, this tutor, Dr. Aladar Shevin, had a very important role in the cultural interaction at that time. Uh, he learned the Korean language very fastly from the students, and uh, later he had a very important role in the, um, um, transforming the, uh, translating the uh, literary works from Korean to Hungarian. So he was uh, responsible to translate uh, some Korean poems and some Korean novels into Hungarian. I mentioned the novel of Hans Orya Tedongang uh, uh, earlier. Uh, this book was translated by him. And um, if you want to uh, look uh, for more information about his life, uh, um, I uh, published a book about uh, uh, him a few years ago. The title of the book uh, is Hongari Cvecsoi Hangukak Hakcsapuk Hanul Manada, the first ever uh, Hungarian scholar, uh, Koreanist scholar who met uh, North uh, Korea. And he was also responsible uh, for uh, to preparing the first ever uh, Korean uh, uh, Hungarian Korean dictionary. Uh, it wasn't available um, any dictionary at that time, and he and his North Korean students prepared the first ever um, uh, Hungarian Korean uh, dictionary. Uh, if you see the um, the cover of the dictionary, you can see that uh, it is written in Korean, Veng Jo Sajon. Veng means Vengria. Uh, the country name of Hungary was called, uh, according to Russian language, was called uh, um, Venguria. Cho means Choson, and Sajon, it means dictionary. So uh, Hungarian, Korean uh, dictionary. And finally, it, um, this is the picture of the first manuscript, that finally uh, this uh, dictionary was published in 1957. One part of the dictionary was printed in Pyongyang because uh, there were no uh, any printing uh, machine available in Hungary which can print uh, Korean characters. And the other part of the dictionary was printed in Budapest uh, and uh, later it was uh, edited uh, to, um, uh, together. And uh, if you uh, see uh, this picture uh, on the right side, uh, in the last year I donated one copy, one original copy of uh, this dictionary to the Kuknip Hangul Pamulgwan National Hangul uh, Museum because I thought uh, it's very uh, important and very unique um, um, evidence of um, the Hungarian and Korean uh, scholarly cooperation and one uh, copy of this dictionary um, um, have to be there. Uh, so I, uh, I donated to the uh, Hangul Museum. Um, we have to mention that uh, at that time during the Korean War many uh, books about North Korea and about the Korean culture and the, the um, 
the situation um, around the Korean Peninsula was published uh, in Hungary. Um, the majority of these books was published from, was translated from Russian or um, Soviet uh, publications, um, but uh, some of uh, this book was written by uh, Hungarians. Um, if you see the first picture uh, on the left side, you can see a poem a book of um, um, uh, poetry, uh, Pectusan. Pectusan, it, uh, this uh, poem was written by Cho Gi Chon. Cho Gi Chon, um, uh, um, he is a um, um, rarely known um, poet in South Korea. Uh, he was um, grown up in the Soviet Union and uh, he was a very uh, important and representative poet in North Korea in the first uh, period of the Korean War, but uh, he passed away during the, uh, the war. Uh, and how he is known in South Korea, maybe you heard the, South, uh, the North Korean song Hipparam. Hipparam, this song was written by Cho Gi Chon. But if you see the, uh, the, pic, uh, the cover of the book, uh, the spelling is a little bit strange, Te Gi Chen. Uh, it's mean Cho Gi Chon, but uh, it was uh, transcripted through the, this, the Russian transcription. So that's why uh, Te Gi Chen, it's mean Cho Gi Chon. Uh, we have to also mention that uh, the Hungarian government uh, sent a Hungarian correspondent to the North Korean uh, uh, territories during the war. His name was uh, uh, Tibor Mérai. Uh, Tibor Mérai spent more than one year in uh, North Korea during the war. Uh, he had a very close relation with North Korean intellectuals at that time, and he published uh, several articles and two uh, books about his um, experiences. You can see uh, one of uh, his books. Uh, it is a third one uh, uh, from uh, left uh, up and uh, it is a second one uh, from left in, the do in down. And uh, let me tell you one interesting story which uh, is about the North Korean students who were studying in Hungary at that time. Uh, just three years after the Korean War, a huge anti-Soviet uh, revolution, anti-Soviet uprising started in Hungary. The people in Budapest especially university students, young freedom fighter, fighters, fought with the Soviet tanks uh, more than one, weeks, one week um, uh, for the Hungarian uh, freedom. And at that time, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, around 1,000 North Korean students were studying in Hungary. The vast majority of the North Korean students had war experience because they fought on the battlefield of the Korean War. So when the young Hungarians, uh, young Hungarian university students didn't know how to use the weapons properly, the North Korean students, their North Korean classmates uh, were who taught them how to use the weapons, how to fight against the Soviet tanks. So it is a very important and uh, rarely known, still rarely known uh, fact that during the Hungarian Revolution in 1956, North Korean students helped to the Hungarian freedom fighters how to use the weapons and how to fight uh, against the, uh, the Soviet uh, tanks. Uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, among that North Korean students uh, escaped to West Europe and later to America uh, after the 
uh, repression of the revolution. Uh, his name was Chong Gi Hong. Um, if you see the picture on the uh, left side, uh, you can see uh, Mr. Chong Gi Hong on the left. Uh, he received uh, a very huge help uh, from an American journalist, Barry Farber, uh, to go to America and uh, became an American citizen uh, there uh, in the late 1950s. And I had opportunity as a Koreanist scholar to meet uh, with Mr. Chong Hong several times, uh, to make an interview with him, interview with him about his experiences from the battlefield of the Korean War until to arriving Hungary, to participating in the Hungarian Revolution. Um, and this picture, um, the second picture on the uh, right, it was taken in New York when I visited uh, Mr. Chong Gi Hong and Mr. Uh, Barry Farber. So you can see the two elderly gentlemen um, um, had a very important role in the a symbolic role in the Hungarian uh, uh, and Korean um, relation. Um, a few years ago I uh, published a book about uh, this subject. Uh, it was published uh, both in Korean and, uh, and English and uh, one copy from this book um, was donated to the library of the Academy of Korean Studies uh, by me, so it is uh, it is available. I worry that uh, I um, uh, spoke uh, too much and I gave you uh, too much information. So just uh, let me mention that uh, right after the repression of the Hungarian Revolution in 1956, uh, in Mm, the late 1956, the North Korean government called back all of the students to uh, North Korea and only a few person uh, was able to escape to uh, West Europe uh, and later to uh, other countries. I just brought uh, a few letters. Uh, the letter on the re left side uh, was written by uh, Hungarian university professors. Uh, and the vice rector of the Budapest Technical University to uh, ask the North Korean uh, embassy in Budapest not to repatriate their Korean students back to North Korea. And uh, uh, the second le uh, letter was written by a North Korean student to his Hungarian friend when uh, his government called back uh, him in December 1956, uh, many friendship, many uh, close relation among Hungarians uh, and North Koreans um, was cut uh, at, uh, at uh, that time. The North Korean students uh, tried to keep in touch with the Hungarian embassy in Pyongyang in the late 1950s. Um, some of the North Korean students wrote letters to the Hungarian diplomats and asked uh, Hungarian uh, newspapers and Hungarian books and wanted to keep in touch, uh, looked for um, news about um, um, the situation in Hungary, but uh, the North Korean government uh, um, um, cut all of the uh, all of the ties between the students um, and the Hungarian um, embassy in Pyongyang from the early 90, uh, 1960s. Um, I think this is the time to to finish my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for calling me. Thank you very much for interesting uh, for this uh, this subject. And uh, it will be my very great pleasure to, to come again and uh, share uh, the result of uh, my researches with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It was really, really informative and a historical lesson for all of us. 
So it is, it is now time to wrap up this lecture with His Excellency Toma Mose. Thank you so much for your informative lecture again. All right, this is the end of today's meeting of the 84th Socrates Korean, Korean lecture meeting. I'd like to thank all of you for being with us today. Thank you.